two years ago, I took the biggest risk of my life. One that felt like stepping into the unknown. I left my home country, Morocco, my career in civil engineering, and everything familiar to pursue a childhood dream, aerospace. In my field, people follow a straight path, earn a degree, gain experience, specialize. I had done that. I had a civil engineering degree. I had spent years designing buildings and infrastructures, solid, grounded structures, not spacecrafts that defy gravity. My textbooks were filled with concrete and steel, not orbital mechanics or rocket nozzles. And yet, here I was, stepping into a world where I was years behind everyone else. But something inside me kept asking, what if there is more? So I took the risk. I moved across the world to start over in aerospace, where I didn't have the background, the connections, or the certainty that I would succeed. And soon, the weight of that decision hit me. I walked into my first seminar and saw equations I didn't recognize. I sat in meetings where I barely understood the terminology. I was surrounded by people who had been in aerospace their entire careers while I was still catching up. I felt like an outsider. For the first time in a long while, I asked myself, what if I don't belong here? What if this was a mistake? Then I realized this feeling, this uncertainty, this moment of crisis, I wasn't the first to experience it. When I looked beyond my own doubt, I started to see a pattern. The biggest breakthroughs, the greatest moments of resilience didn't come when things were easy. They came when everything fell apart. Then I came across a story that captured this truth at the grandest scale imaginable, 200,000 miles from Earth. It's April 1970. Apollo 13, NASA's third mission to land humans on the moon, has just launched. The crew are professionals prepared for anything. Their training has covered every possible scenario. They know their spacecraft inside and out. For the first two days, everything is smooth. Too smooth, really. Mission Control even jokes about how uneventful the mission is. Then, just over 55 hours into the flight, an oxygen tank explodes. Imagine that moment, 200,000 miles from Earth. Suddenly, alarms are blaring, the spacecraft shudders, lights flash, and then silence. Back on Earth, the words come through the radio. Houston, we've had a problem. A problem? This was a catastrophe. The explosion had crippled the spacecraft, cut enough power, oxygen, and water. The crew now faced a chilling reality. They might not make it home. This is the moment where most of us would panic, but that's not what happened. The astronauts and the mission control did something remarkable. First, they paused. Instead of reacting out of fear, they took a step back to assess. The command module was losing power fast, so they took a tough decision, shut it down to conserve energy for reentry, and retreat to the lunar module. The problem the lunar module wasn't designed to support three people for four days, but it was all they had. Next, they focused. There wasn't time to solve everything at once, so they focused on one issue at a time, oxygen levels. 
carbon dioxide filters, navigation. Then they simplified. They looked at what they had, not what they wished they had. One of the most remarkable moments of the mission was when engineers on the ground had to figure out how to fit a square carbon dioxide buildup into a round opening. They used duct tape, cardboard, and plastic bags, basically the contents of a junk drawer. But it worked. Throughout it all, the engineers on the ground and the astronauts collaborated. The mission control worked closely with the astronauts, guiding them through every step. The astronauts followed instructions, adapting to every new challenge. Together, the crew and the mission control overcame obstacles neither could have tackled alone. Meanwhile, the astronauts had to navigate their crippled spacecraft back to Earth with no functional navigation system. They used the sun as a reference point, performing manual course corrections. Every second of their course adjustments mattered. Too much, and they skip off the atmosphere. Too little, and they burn up. Four days later, against all odds, Apollo 13 splashed down safely in the Pacific Ocean. The crew's survival wasn't just a triumph of engineering. It was a testament to the human spirit. And what's remarkable is that they didn't just solve problems. They reframed the entire situation. What could have been seen as a failure, an aborted moon landing, became known as NASA's most successful failure. We often talk about the power of technology, the brilliance of engineering. But at the heart of every impossible challenge is something far more powerful, human ingenuity. We've sent people to the moon. We've turned life-threatening crises in space into stories of triumph, not because we had all the answers in advance, but because of our ability to think and adapt, even when things don't go as planned. And that is not just a NASA story. It's a human story. It is our story. In space, or in our all lives, it's not just technology or knowledge that carries us through. It's us. Our human ability to think under pressure and keep pushing forward, even when success seems impossible. What Apollo 13 showed us, and what I've learned firsthand, is that our true potential isn't revealed when things go smoothly. It's unlocked when we face the unexpected and refuse to give up. Think about it. How often do we let fear stop us from trying something new? How many times do we feel overwhelmed by obstacles and assume they mean we're not good enough? How many of us never reach our full potential simply because we don't have a process to navigate uncertainty? The truth is, potential isn't about talent alone. It's about adaptability. That's how we stretch beyond our limits. If the crew had panicked, if they had let the chaos consume them, they wouldn't have made it home. Instead, they followed these four steps. Pause, focus, simplify, and collaborate. And that is exactly what allowed me to push beyond my own limits. At first, airspace felt impossible. Then I realized I could apply the Apollo 13 approach, so I followed their four steps. Pause. Instead of letting fear take over, I took a step back. This wasn't a failure. It was an adjustment. Focus. I couldn't learn everything at once, 
So I focused on one concept at a time. Simplify. I used what I already knew, structures and mechanics from civil engineering, to bridge the gap to aerospace. Collaborate. I lead on mentors, professors, and classmates. I asked for help. And slowly, I started finding my way. And that same mindset didn't just help me in my transition to aerospace, but it became crucial in my research. As a PhD student in aerospace engineering, I work on composite materials, complex structures we use to build spacecrafts and aircrafts. These materials are strong and lightweight, but their behavior can be hard to predict. Small defects can turn into catastrophic failures if not properly understood. So at one point, I had a major roadblock. I was running computer simulations to predict how these materials respond and their mechanical loads, how they stretch, crack, and break over time. But the results I got didn't match existing models engineers had relied on for years. It felt like trying to fit a key into a lock, one that should have worked, but it didn't. So I kept trying, adjusting variables, running simulations, but nothing worked. I thought they had done something wrong. I was ready to give up. Then I thought back to Apollo 13, just like the engineers who had to make a CO2 filter from whatever they had, I had to work with what was in front of me. Instead of forcing the data to fit existing models, I took a step back and reassessed. I focused on one piece at a time instead of getting overwhelmed by the whole picture. Then I looked for patterns within the data, and I sought insights from others that helped me refine my approach. The result? A completely new predictive tool, one that didn't just solve the problem, but it actually gave us a better way to understand how these materials fail. What seemed like a failure at first turned into a breakthrough. And I know I'm not alone in this. We've all faced our own Apollo 13 moments. Moments where everything seemed to be going according to plan, for an unexpected crisis to turn our world upside down. Maybe it's a sudden career shift that left you questioning your path. A personal loss that made you rethink everything. A health struggle that forced you to adapt in ways you never imagined. Or even a global crisis that disrupted life as we knew it. These moments test us. They push us beyond our comfort zones, demanding resilience, creativity, and sometimes even a complete reimagination of the path forward. They might feel like disasters, like an explosion in the middle of space, cutting off the way back to what was familiar. But just like Apollo 13, these challenges can become defining moments, the moments that in hindsight reveal what we are truly capable of. So the next time you find yourself at the edge of the unknown, torn between comfort and risk, do the thing that scares you. Growth doesn't happen in comfort zones. But stepping into the unknown doesn't mean diving in blindly. Challenges will come. And when they do, here is how to navigate them with the Apollo 13 mindset. Pause, step back and take a breath. Focus, one issue at a time. Simplify, use what you have and don't overcomplicate the solution. Collaborate, lean on others. No one does this alone. Apollo 13 didn't achieve its original goal, but it achieved something far greater. It showed us what's possible when we refuse to give up. 
So as you face challenges in your own life, remember this. The anomaly is not the end of the story. It's the beginning of unlocking your full potential. And when that moment comes, when uncertainty tries to hold you back, take a deep breath and remind yourself, Houston, we have a solution. Thank you.